And once upon for you, here is the structure of the code and the packages for you, right? So in the delegate folder, we got the delegate pack. We have our delegate class, right? So that's the delegate package. The model package contains the model class and uh, the driver package contains that driver class. Okay guys, welcome back. This is Professor Inc. And in this video, uh, we're gonna continue with this three-part series that I started previously uh, with the MVC pattern and the pattern we're going to cover this time is going to be the delegate model pattern and in the last video uh, towards the end of it I talked about how there were some potential issues with MVC uh, predominantly having to do with performance uh, you know you have got the responsibility split up across three different entities you know the model the view and the controller and you know, sending all those messages or that message passing and data moving around to the, all the different places um, can be um, problematic in terms of performance because you got a bunch of function calls happening uh, and whatnot. So an alternative to, to increase performance um, is to modify that pattern a little bit to where instead of having three entities, MVC, you've actually got just two. And those two are um, delegate and model. And the model, um, nothing changes there, right? Model is responsible for storing all uh, data, just like with MVC, right? So nothing's going to change there. Um, the other entity, though, becomes known as the delegate or is known as the delegate. And basically what it's doing is it's just mushing together the view and the controller from the MVC pattern, right? So the logic and the interaction with the user becomes the responsibility for the delegate, right? And so this cuts down the uh, number of function calls that have to happen between entities by a lot, right? Because now you've only got um, you know communication happening between two entities as opposed to three, right? And um, so this becomes a bit more efficient or potentially a lot more efficient. So in terms of UML, right, if we want to view this graphically, on the left over here, you can look and see, you know, this aggregation relationship that we had with MVC here on the left, which is to say that you've got the controller that has a model and has a view, right? Um, because remember, we in that previous video, we showed that the controller has got references to both the model and the view. And so it's handling, handling communications between those two. Now over on the right here, what we have is a diagram showing us the delegate model pattern. And in this case, we've just got two major entities, right? So we've got um, the delegate and we've got the model. So in both cases, model is still responsible for doing what it does, storing data and the implementation of the uh, model is completely separate from the implementation of all the other pieces, right? So it's completely and utterly <clears throat> decoupled from uh, the other parts of the application, right? So it's acting completely and utterly independent and you could swap out the model uh, at will, right? <clears throat> so now there's some other names for this particular pattern, um, UI model, document view, you know, sometimes I just refer to it, you might hear me refer to it in class as just, you know, delegate um, pattern, right? So um, specifically delegate model, UI model, document view, those are the, the uh, names that it's most commonly used under. So before with uh, MVC, just to re review, you know, you had the view and the controller communicating directly with each other. And it was only the controller that was communicating with the model. But under delegate model pattern, you know, the essentially the view and the controller elements are all incorporated into one entity known as the delegate, right? And so then the delegate is communicating with the model as needs be. So I'm going to do an example. It's another simple example program for you here. And essentially what we're going to see is that we're just going to have two classes, two packages, um, you know, for a delegate package and a model package. Uh, and the logic and the 
UI elements are all going to be combined into the one uh, delegate class. Okay, so the um, setup for this is going to be pretty similar, right? It's just instead of instantiating three objects, you know, we'll end up instantiating. We'll end up instantiating. Sorry, uh, two, right? So you'll see that going to be a very similar type of situation. It's just fewer entities involved. Okay, so now for both the MVC and the delegate model pattern, right? There's this basic litmus test um, that you can have to determine whether or not your implementations are good. So for MVC, it was, well, you know, can I swap out the view and still have everything work with the app, right? I mean, you know, the controller doesn't need any coding updates, model doesn't need any coding updates, you know, if so, then you got a pretty good MVC. And similarly with the model uh, in the MVC pattern. For the uh, delegate model pattern, you know, can you swap out the model, right? Can you have the model um, be tested by itself in isolation with some kind of a testing harness, say JUnit, for example, or write maybe your own test drivers? Um, can it be implemented independently or developed independently from the delegate? If so, then you've probably got a pretty good implementation uh, of this thing, right? So some other things to consider um, <clears throat> when dealing with delegate model um, pattern, also MVC, you know, the actions performed by the model need to be quick, right? So what does that mean? Well, you know, if you have a single threaded application and a user clicks on a button or you know they type in some kind of a response to a prompting at the command line if it's a command line interface well you know you, you can't have the user interface just frozen there while the model's doing its thing right so you know if the model is having to do some complex storage say in, in, a, in a database then the UI is going to be sitting there frozen waiting for that to finish before an update comes back, right? So you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So one particular or one potential solution that would be to have multi-threading going on where you have each one of these components um, running on their own threads so they're independent of each other. Now, if you're implementing a GUI using, say, the Swing library from Java, well, then that's pretty much going to be the way it is. I mean, automatically you don't have to do any extra work because um, it's inherently multi-threaded, right? But if you're doing something in say C++, well then, you know, then you'd have to use the appropriate third-party um, library. And you just have to make sure that that's set up to where, you know, your application is responsive. Okay, so the... To summarize the motivation for delegate, um, model pattern is, you know, we want to make sure that we're hiding information. Um, I mean, also for MVC too. I mean, we want to, we want to make sure that we're hiding information. What we're basically talking about is separating out data versus the UI. Um, and that data, the state information shouldn't care about the UI. They're independently developable. So MVC model has the state and data view is presenting the model to the user. And then the controller is doing the program logic. Um, and UI model, the delegate pattern, you know, this is similar idea. It's just the model is independent, whereas the UI and the controller logic are integrated into one piece. So you have a lot closer integration between controller and view, but you're also maintaining that most important, the most vital separation, which is, hey, your UI and the data of the application, those guys are being completely uh, separate. All right, so let's take a look at a um, code sample of, of this thing in in action. So again, we'll go with a really um, simple example like we had um, with MVC. Uh, here's a directory structure for the packages for uh, this Java implementation. You notice this is different than what we had in the previous video. I mean, all we're going to have here is our driver package, which is going to contain our driver class, um, which is going to serve for, you know, basically just to instantiate the 
model in the delegate and pass the reference to the model object to the delegate object so that way the delegate can do it can do its job model is going to be basically the exact same thing there's not going to be anything different um, with our model package than we had with the mvc uh, model package delegates can be where all the changes uh, happen right so we've only got the four packages here delegate driver and model um, we don't need a view because the view is being mushed together with the controller to form uh, the delegate Okay, so let's go ahead and write some code. Um, so in the model uh, class, right, this is the only class that's part of our package model. You know, from the previous video, you'll notice this looks the exact same. All I did was copy and paste the code um, into this file. Uh, so nothing different here. This is simply gonna function as a data store for a simple integer. Right, so nothing's changed there. What about the driver uh, class? Well, um, here we're just gonna have you know, this simple class that's gonna have our public static void main. And you'll see that you know, it's instantiating a brand new delegate object and a new model object in passing its um, memory address, the model's memory address to the delegate uh, for storage. Right, so we're gonna have to do new stuff here, and the only new stuff we're really gonna be doing is gonna be coding this um, delegate piece. Now, remember, the delegates combining view and controller, so we're gonna have um, the constructor implementing the logic for this simple app, like the controller was responsible for doing in the MVC, um, and we're also gonna be combining uh, the view stuff which you know the view would have been responsible for um, from the MVC pattern. So anyway, let's um, add a reference for a model. That's the only thing we're going to need. So the delegate's going to be constantly communicating with the model to get the job done for whatever it's you know whatever the uh, pattern is trying to accomplish and you know, whatever the app is trying to accomplish using this pattern. Uh, let's have our constructor. And that constructor is going to accept a single um, model reference as an argument, and then it's going to have all of the logic for the app inside of inside of it, right? It's for this for this simple uh, program. So um, let's assign to the private model reference the the uh, parameter, and then we're going to have the logic for the application uh, following. Now, from the previous video, right, we had a couple of different methods here. We had, um, for the view, we had a prompt method, if I recall correctly. So we'll have that here also. And that was serving purely to um, display a string to the user, right? So system dot out dot print uh, s, right? And then we had a method for retrieving um, an integer from the user, right? So um, I'll call it uh, input, right? And let's create a scanner object here so we can read from the console. Okay, and then we're just going to return what's read uh, by that scanner object, right? So these are the, the helper methods. These previously were part of the view, right? But now they've been integrated with the delegate because, you know, the delegate combines controller stuff and um, view stuff, right? So the logic for the application is going to go in the delegate's constructor in this previously would have been separate in the view entity or excuse me in the controller entity okay so let's go ahead and do this um we'll just ask the user for <clears throat> to enter a number we'll store that in the model and then we'll confirm that we stored that and then we'll retrieve that data from the model <clears throat> and then display it to the user on the screen, right? So let's do that. Uh, so we got prompt, 
and we'll say enter an integer, right? And then uh, we'll get their response. Um, so uh, input, okay, and then we'll store their response. Uh, so we're gonna pass that on to the model, right? So prompt the user for an integer, right? Retrieve their response from them and then pass that on to the model, right? And then we'll confirm to the user that it was stored, right? So prompt um, your response was stored, right? Um, and then we'll go ahead and retrieve that value from the model. Right, so um, m dot get x, and then we'll show it to the user. Oops, let me type correctly. So um, prompt. Right. The value stored is you know plus j, and then a new line character. Okay. So I think that's everything. Um, so this program is going to do something very similar to what I showed you in the previous video. Um, just different way of doing it, just a different approach where